What's happening guys, Cliff again on Crypto. So today we're gonna to look at how you can retrieve your password for your My Ether wallet. Now I lost mine, or I couldn't remember that I made one going back a couple of months and felt a little bleak, but I thought, you know what? I'm gonna give it a good old brute force and see if I can get myself in. So stay right there. Right guys, so I thought I'd make this video only because I think it has a great ending to it and it could possibly help those of you that are stuck in the same predicament that I was stuck in a few days ago. Now, fortunately, mine did have a successful outcome. I did in fact get into the wallet and I was able to retrieve and move my coins over to my ledger, but I was stressing a little bit. So, give you a quick overview. I created a Fusion wallet back in the early days when it just came out and for some obscure reason I must have made use of a common password, I'm sure I did, but I don't know if it was case sensitive or not, but nevertheless with all the excitement stuck a few rigs on and I got mining with it. Now normally I think I know where my mistake was, the wallet overall made use of the password that was for the previous account, it was a complicated thing, but nevertheless a few days back, another ledger arrived in the mail, and this is how I found out that I was actually stuck in this problem. A ledger arrived in the mail, and I wanted to move it over to the ledger. And when I looked over again, I could see that I did not in fact have this password. I tried, and I tried, and I tried, and I eventually posted on the crib saying, oh, you know, is there a way around this? And then two other individuals also reached out to me when I did post it, saying that they are in fact stuck with the same problem. So I thought to myself, hang on, this has to be a flaw with the wallet. So I reached out to the developer, and he confirmed that no, it's not. It's definitely a password that was created, and I don't remember that password. So even Cliff himself slipped it up there, and I'll take it on the back. Now, I thought to myself, there is no ways that I'm going to go down without a fight. So I decided to start brute forcing this wallet, and yes, I was very successful, so that is why I'm going to share with you guys today. Right, so there's a few things you're going to need to do this going. Now, firstly, you're going to need Hashcat version 401. So download that, as always, links down below. Download Hashcat, unzip it to your folder. This is a Windows demonstration, just to be clear, guys. So for those of you who are running Linux, you can also do it. Hashcat is for both, but just download the Windows version. So Hashcat 401, I downloaded, get that to your desktop. Secondly, get yourself a TXT empty file and put all the passwords that you think you might have used or even your most commonly used passwords. This way, the script is going to mumbo jumbo, add variables, upper, lowercase. It's going to test everything for you. It does that automatically. So put the most common passwords that you normally use because subconsciously you probably would have used a, a password you're familiar with. Put that in a TXT file, line separated, and save it. Next thing you're going to need, and the most important, is your key store file. How do we get this? Key store files are normally when you back up a wallet. They back it up to the key store file and you need that UCT file to be able to get the information out of it that we're gonna need. Now, if you backed it up and it's a wallet.dat that you're referring to, there is a Python script that you can edit the wallet.dat and it'll, it retrieves the information with regards to the MAC address and so forth that you're going to need like in this demonstration. I'll have to do a separate video with that. I had the UCT file, I was not trying to encrypt a wallet.dat, but this hashcat will work for both. But there is a separate script you need just to retrieve some information from the wallet.dat to be able to use the hashcat to try and brute force it. Now guys, be careful here. Well, not be careful. Let me just give a little, I would call it a disclaimer. This is not to say it's going to work every time. I was fortunate, it ran for three minutes and I managed to get into the, into the wallet. But prior to that, with other rules, I wrote custom rules for myself. But prior to that, it ran for two days and I had no luck. So this can vary, guys. Trying different rules with the same parser file did in fact work for me. And I'm hoping it'll do the same for you. But if you do get stuck, reach me over at the, at the crib. I'm going to be doing assistance with it. Now, don't always, another very important note, do not just give your wallet or dat files to anybody or ask for assistance. You never know what lures on the, the dark web. So reach out to me personally on the crib and I will assist you, not remotely, but from the thread so that you can get on your way. Okay. Don't take help from some strangers, guys. Right, so once you've got all that stuff, let's hop over to the to the uh, directory with regards to the crib. So once I've got my hashcat, as I said, you're going to need your password. I'm just going to open up a sample, and then you see I've got the word password in. And furthermore, I've got the hashcat and then the, the hashcat code, which would be this little line here, which is the important. This has basically got the information that we're going to retrieve from the UCT file. How do we get it? Very simple. We're going to go over to our UCT file. 
and I'm going to go mine from the desktop quickly. I'm going to open it up for us, and there it is. So there's what my UCT looks like, and this is the information that we're going to want to take. So you'll see the 150, the salt encryption, and you'll see the 150 there, but I'm going to explain to you what they all look like. So I found a site. I also made a document, a Word document with regards to it, but this website will give you a bit more indication. So the UCT file, by default, when you open it up in Notepad, it looks like this. Let's just pull up my UCT again. Where is this UCT? So here we go. So there you can see is the UCT file. That is what it looks like by default. It has this address, everything that you see here, exactly like your UCT. It then tells you, this guy was kind enough to show what the Hashcat requirement is required to be filled out. So I'm just going to open that again. So here's the Hashcat. It shows you what the layout needs to be. So it needs to be, in this case, Ethereum. This replies to Ubik and all the Etash algorithms. So you always make use of Ethereum. And then furthermore, you've got the byte size, which is 1024, which you can leave standard. You've got the R, which is 8, set over there. So just put that back to 8. And you get where I'm going with this. So if you follow this little guide, I made a snapshot of this. I'm going to include it in this video right over there. So you can see it. But furthermore, I'll put a link to it as well. And then you've got the MAC address, which is over here, which you'll see in your UCT file. You've got your MAC address. There you can see the word MAC, then you take what's what's inside the, the, the commas here. You've got the MAC address, so you take the MAC address over there. And then furthermore, they want the uh, ciphertext, and there's your ciphertext. And you put it in this layout. So firstly, and yeah, you'll see he shows that layout exactly what you need to do. Let's just pull this down. So there you start. Ethereum 1 or 2, and the first one is the SALT address. So you copy the SALT one in. There you can see I did it. There's the SALT stopped by the star the next one that is required is basically the blue which is the cipher text so i go over to my cipher text i take it over there there you can see that's the cipher text over there and lastly believes the mac address which is the green one so very simple those three things you need you can go ahead and save it and call it hash code and put it in the same directory as your as your hash cats right so yeah you can see it's now in the same directory i've got the hash code which is that what i've retrieved i've got the password list that i might assume so yeah you can put obviously different types of passwords guys call it pass you don't even have to do pass but you can call it happy if that's something that you knew, use often and it'll start making use of these words and obviously trying different things so always put in as many passes as you can that way your chances is a lot greater all right so once you've done that you've got all that set now you've got your this is what it looks like when the directory was downloaded we are then going to run the cmd command so we're just going to run here cmd and we can hit enter all right so once you've got our cmd you present it with a little console as such and i'm going to go into my documents and uh, let's just go you can just tab and it will autofill for you document and i'm going to go cd hashcat and there we go then i'm going to go hash um let's go hashcat and i'll show you what exactly what we're going to need hashcat uh, come on hashcat 64 because it's a 64 version and i'm going to run the exe and i'm going to push help Okay, this gives me a, I'm going to open this window nice and big. This gives me a good indication of all the commands that Hashcat needs. All right, so I made a command to this just to speed up this tutorial. I'm going to put that in for you guys below. Just copy it. It makes it a lot easier than you guys trying to fiddle what commands you need. All right, so the first thing we're going to need is, I just want to give you a quick overview. Yeah, you can see Ethereum. Where is Ethereum? 5700. This is the Ethereum uh, code that we will need in the hash mode and there's a few as you can see different variables now i'm not going to run through all these variables for you go and read it by typing in the help and you can get an indication of what they do so firstly the best way to know what devices you have is to type in hashcat and then to type in h and then i sorry double i no that's not working is it one or is it a capital yeah, sorry, it's a capital. So I put in a capital I. Then you're gonna see it showed you two devices. In this case, it showed me my GPU, which is device one, and then my CPU, which is device two. So in this case, I'm gonna be making use of the CPU for this demonstration. So I'm going to then type in hashcat. Okay, dot exe is what we start with. And let me just quickly bring this a little bit more to the center of the screen for you guys. There we go. So I've got hashcat, 64exe. Then I'm gonna go dash m. And then I'm going to put in that 157, which is the Ethereum-based um, code that you saw. I'm then going to force, because I want to force it. And then I'm going to show D, and I'm going to select the one that I want to use here. In this case, I'm going to be making use of number 2, because it's the CPU. Now, I don't recommend GPU, but if I use the GPU here, this video is going to bomb out. So I'm using the CPU for this demonstration. Next, you select the hash, the hash, um, hash code, that, that file that we called hash code. 
and I'm going to call it hash code. You see it auto detects if I use tab, hash code.txt, and then my password, and I'm going to go password.txt, that was my password list. I'm going to go .w3, that's just another rule, and then I can put my rules, and in this case, you can just type in rules, and forward slash, and you can make use of best64, but we want to use the dive. Okay, so D dive, there it is. The dive rule is a great one, but I'm going to also put a link. I need to work out how I'm going to do that to give you guys my custom rules that worked for me. But the dive is the most highly successful one. If you go over to this website, it gives you an indication. Sorry, dive is not the highly, yeah, dive is pretty good. Yeah, you can see dive is extremely successful in guessing the cracks. I'll put a link to this website as well. And these are the different ones that you can try. So try different rules, guys, if you feel that it doesn't uh, work for you. So once you've got it like that, you can then go ahead and press enter. This is pretty exciting stuff now. There we go, press enter. And there you can see it starts to run. I'm just gonna pull this up a little bit. Just so that you can see exactly what it's doing here. And there it is. Now if I press S, yeah, you can see now it's just going with password and now it's starting to crack. There it's running, it's trying to decrypt this, this, this. And if I keep pressing S guys, you'll notice here, the candidates it keeps changing the password and yeah it tells me exactly it's going to run for nine seconds because obviously i didn't put a lot of passwords in so it shows you quickly time started it'll show you that uh oh, sorry i made use of the gpu yeah so yeah you can see my gpu was in fact working it gives you the speeds and so forth and that's pretty much it if i keep pressing s you'll notice that it's trying different passwords generating different um different ways that it can try and crack this file. So guys, eventually it will show cracked and that looks like this. There is what mine looked like guys. I was super stoked. It only ran for a couple of minutes, but let it run, try different combos. And once you have it, oh, it is such a great feeling. And that's why I thought I'd make this video because I know there's gonna be many people that have it. If you're getting stuck, reach out to me guys. I think this is a great way um, to give back as well as try and assist those that are in this predicament. If I could get into it, I'm very sure any noob can as well. It's something so foolish, something so simple. And my password was the password I normally use, but it had an uppercase and some other variable to it. I don't know what I did. It might have been even the keyboard that I was, you know, when you're typing fast, that you just didn't uh, type it incorrectly. So there we can. So every time I keep pressing S, you'll see that it's different passwords just to see the status. But you can just let this run and it will do its thing. And eventually it will show you cracked like that. I'm really liking that screenshot because I love that the fact that I cracked it and uh, pretty stoked about it. So guys, I hope you're not in this predicament, but if you are, reach out. If you're new to my channel, give us a like and a subscribe. It really helps. We've got a lot of cool content coming. Sorry, it's been a bit quiet. I've been busy with a lot of things and we're going to be back soon next week, pushing our daily content as always and really quality content as well. And I'm sure you guys are going to love it. But to the next time, guys, I hope you enjoyed it.